evening and welcome back to the program. Uh, we have uh, a fine show for you tonight. George Miller will be joining us uh, later in the program. And uh, my next guest is a flamboyant and highly effective consumer advocate for Channel 13 in Houston, Texas, whose most famous expose involved a chicken ranch. Let's take a look at him in action now. Watch the monitors, if you will. Well, I'm glad Grandma Carter will get a refund. It may ease her aggravation, but with all the competition, and some airlines in financial trouble, you would think they'd be more considerate of passengers, especially the elderly. I'm sick and tired of people being mistreated at the airport. Someday, someday when there's another mode of transportation, the airlines will be begging for these passengers. Marvin Zindler, Eyewitness News. He was pretty brave and kept coming out for a little nibble on some food on the floor. The cook here has to be pretty brave, too. I don't get scared. I just don't like working with them. Do they come in very often while you're just staying in there? They're always running in and out. That is, I mean, mice are always running in and out of here. Yeah, when you're cooking and all. Well, they've been told about them, you know, they put out mouse traps and things like that, but... The Sambo's restaurant at 4602 Tacoma is still closed for cleanup and repairs. They will not open up until the health department gives them an okay. Well, tomorrow, we'll visit a fast food chain that doesn't like clowns on their property, but that didn't stop me. Marvin Zindler, Eyewitness News. Marvin Zindler, Eyewitness News. Marvin Zindler, Eyewitness News. Marvin Zindler, Eyewitness News. And now, please welcome Marvin Zindler. So, I understand you work for Eyewitness News. Marvin Zindler, Eyewitness News. How did you, uh... <laughs> How did you uh, develop this, uh, I guess it's a distinctive little, uh, it's your signature. How did, how did that come about? It just comes about naturally because it's the syllables in it and, and it, uh, it's pretty difficult for me to say my name without saying it particularly. Is it I difficult get... to say your name without doing that? Well, <laughs> try it once. Okay, if I was to do a commentary like I was doing there and then I'd come out and say, Marvin Zeller Eyewitness News. Nah. It just wouldn't no, be No, it good. wouldn't work. No, we'd bring the pig back out if that's it's the case. <laughs> and incidentally, the folks back home thinks it's appropriate for me to follow a pig act. <laughs> uh, how long have you been on the air in the Houston there? Uh, it'll be 10 years in, in uh, January the 1st. And, and people, you're kind of a cult hero there? People imitate your style and... Uh, uh... Most of the kids do. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five years old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, what, what kind of, you're, you said here in the introduction that you're a consumer advocate. What kind of letters do you get well, and what kind I of problems do you handle? I don't care about the word consumer advocate because it, it takes in all kinds of problems and equities, I, I feel. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, somebody went out and bought something. It's all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, like, what are recent problems that you've been addressing yourselves to? Well, yourself last to? night, uh, or night before last, I did a story on a, a man who had had a, a, a bypass, a triple bypass, back in September of 1981. And uh, when he came out of the hospital, about a month later, he starts getting these letters from the Guardian plan, a, a pre-funeral arrangements. And the guy starts getting upset because he thought the hospital and the doctor had sent him these, uh, mm -hmm. had sent, given his name to the funeral. Yeah, or maybe uh, they well, knew something. Well, uh, well, something when I went out and, well, when I went out and interviewed this man, and he's about six foot four and weighs about three hundred pounds, works for a trucking company. He sat up there and, looked, and he's very serious. He says, "You know, I thought they knew something that I didn't know." Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, he had called and tried to get them to stop sending him these uh, letters, which came to him about every month or yeah. so. And so finally, this was this was one of the stories that I did. Yeah. Now the the big story that uh, I guess got you some national attention is the one we're going to talk about in a minute about the uh, the whorehouse in Texas there. Is that right? Well, the whorehouse in Texas has become a, a kind of a household word. I never okay. heard that word before on television <coughs> instead, until this What do you mean? Just, you never heard whorehouse before on television? Well, we've always heard it as body house or a house of prostitution, but never whorehouse. Oh, really? Well, you can't, maybe you can't say whorehouse. <laughs> I, I've uh, just recently been able to say it without being embarrassed. Oh, really? It embarrasses you to say it? Try, try it once. Whorehouse. Yeah. 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 We're going to pause here for a 
for a commercial. We'll be right back with Marvin Zindler from I Witness News. show a reminder here Monday uh, join us we will have the owner and founder of cosmetics firm Mary Kay cosmetics that would be Mary Kay herself yes a murmur <laughs> races through the audience uh, also comedian Larry Miller that's interesting tonight we're having George Miller Monday Larry Miller apparently we're down to the M's in the big book of comics um, <laughs> also uh, sports commentator and former coach of the Kansas City Chiefs Hank Stram and here's something I'd tune in for Dave's Grab Bag. <laughs> That's right. I'll be here for Dave's Grab Bag. That'll be Monday. And still to come uh, on this show tonight, we have, of course, uh, Marvin Zindler, Eyewitness News, and some predictions from the National Enquirer. Marvin, uh, you want to take a look at the, uh, the footage that we've compiled when I guess you... Uh, what did you do with the chicken ranch? This is the whorehouse that we were talking about in Texas. Well, this went back to 73 when... Uh, the Attorney General's office uh, asked me to come in and do a, uh, a, a story on the, the chicken ranch because they couldn't get it closed down because the DA over there, the district attorney, said that it had been going on for 100 years and he wasn't going to close it. And, of course, the, the Attorney General in Texas doesn't have criminal uh, jurisdiction over these counties, so I started uh, doing the survey. Now, how, how do people feel about this? Were they for closing it down or against closing it down? Well, Just the it, it was really funny to see 80-year-old women and 70-year-old women get mad at me because uh, I was able to close down a mm -hmm. whorehouse. I, I never did figure out why, but maybe they worked there maybe 75 years ago. I don't uh -huh. know. But, um, but, uh, well, and this, of course, is uh, the, the Broadway musical came from this and the... Um, what do you call it? The, the film? The show, the, the film. Movie came, movie came from if it If you want to call that a movie, yes. You didn't care for the movie? No, sir, I really didn't. I, I thought they had, it was strictly a Burt Reynolds movie. Well, he was in it. <laughs> yes. Oh, I see. Okay, well, let's take a look at the, we have some footage here of, uh, 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 this, what are we going to see here, Marvin? Just you and I the I have Morehouse? no idea what y'all put together. Okay, we're all pretty well confused. Action 13 received an anonymous complaint about two alleged houses of prostitution. The complainant said the houses were operating openly in our neighboring towns of Sealy and LaGrange. It's illegal to operate a house of prostitution in Texas, and past history shows they cannot function without someone in authority protecting them. Rick Armstrong and I return to the LaGrange site, this time in a marked car. Minutes later, a woman who identified herself as Edna Milton came out, said she owned the house and land. She wanted us to leave, but Armstrong remained in the car, and he continued filming as I got a lengthy interview with a woman. I asked what kind of business was she running. I have a boarding house here. Is that all it is? It's enough. You're not operating a house of prostitution? Whether I am or not doesn't come in the heading of your business. Sheriff says Edna Milton, who says she owns the house, makes numerous contributions to the community. He says she donates to the Little League, gives to a private swimming pool, gave $10,000 to help build a new hospital, and even contributes to the churches. I believe that all the money she makes out there is spent right here in town. You don't think it's linked to any organized crime anywhere else? I know damn well there's no organized crime connected in any way, whatever. Has your office or you or any of your deputies ever accepted any money from her or any way like that? Not a penny. No, no payoff anywhere in the world to anybody. Hmm. Now, um, now, that was supposed to be... The sheriff Reynolds, that we saw. Burt Reynolds played his part. Uh -huh. and, and Dolly Parton played Dolly the part of the madam. Dolly Parton played the madam. Incidentally, the madam actually played on Broadway for about a month in the old, in, when, in the, in the, when the uh, musical was playing here. She played the part of herself in the no, musical? No, she played uh, the, the elderly uh, madam in the wheelchair that died and left it to uh, Oh, I to, see. Yeah. To her. But uh, other than that, pretty much dead ringers there uh, for Burt and Dolly, aren't they? <laughs> and, and in the... Um, in the movie, you were played by whom? Dom DeLuise. Yeah. Now, now uh, what was your reaction to the film? You said you said already you didn't you didn't care for it, but other than well, that, of course, uh, uh, I would have liked to seen uh, Johnny Carson play me. They tried to get him to play me. Oh, they did. They asked Johnny to play yes, you. I thought he, I thought he'd be a good one, and if he wouldn't have played it, I'd have liked to seen Ted Knight play me mm -hmm. because I think Ted Knight would have been a good. Well, one. now uh, I'd like to seen Willie Nelson play the sheriff. Uh -huh. 
but unfortunately, uh, Universal had their own ideas, and yeah. so they're making more money, I guess, than they would have if all these others would. You, you thought about suing them, though, didn't you? Well, I thought about it, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, I haven't lost anything out of it, so uh -huh. I, there's no way you can, you can, anybody can sue, but collecting or getting a judgment is something else, and there'd been no way I could have ever won that case. So uh, there's no more prostitution in and around Houston, I'm guessing, now, huh? <laughs> Yes, we have plenty of prostitution well. in Houston, but that's not the problem. The problem is it's not open, it's not protected, and if these gals want to get out and make it on their own, and if they get caught, they've got to pay the, the price, mm -hmm. that's fine. But yeah. to, to, for law enforcement, for, for public officials to allow it to operate uh, because they have a badge to do it, I don't think it's right, and that's the reason I did it. Didn't, didn't the sheriff punch you, the, the old broke, guy we saw? He that? broke some of my ribs, yeah. uh, which they eventually paid for. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I noticed <laughs> I noticed in the in the videotape we looked at earlier, you looked differently then. Of course, it was 1973. Well, I've only had six cars. I was, you know, I heard you say you're going to have this young lady on, well, she's not a young lady, but she's a, a lady coming on your program, a cosmetic, uh, what's her name? Uh, oh, Mary Kay. Mary of, Kay. Uh, well, of course, I've had six cosmetic surgeries. Really? Uh, since, in fact, my navel's almost on the top of my head. <laughs> But, uh, now that's just a that's just a joke, isn't it? <laughs> Not really, almost. <laughs> just a joke there. Um, now uh, let's talk about your appearance. Now you you're, uh, is that a, is that a toupee you're wearing? It's a higher piece, yes. Yeah, and uh, now um, not all of it is, but uh, most of it is. Yeah, you seem really f uh, you're, you of course obviously a flamboyant character. Uh, I don't know what the word flamboyant means. I, it's been, <laughs> It, it's been described to me on different ways, and I really don't know. Yeah, uh, but wh what was what, your... What is flamboyant? Well, I, I think somebody who is, does things in an exaggerated fashion in, for, to call attention to his or herself. Would, would that be close enough? I don't know. Uh, people say that I do. I don't know yeah. that I do. Well, now, what was your reason for the cosmetic surgery? Not that it's any of my well, business, but because, you Well, uh, because back in, back in 1950, I did, when television first started, I was on television. I was a news uh, reporter and a cameraman at that time. We didn't have the luxuries that we have today, having a camera crew and, a, and being a reporter. So uh, while I was on the air for about a year, year and a half, the station manager says, told the news director, he says, get that guy Zinner off the air because he's too damn ugly. And so... Now, did they come to you and say, Marvin, uh, came to me and everything's said, great, just one little problem. <laughs> Stay, he said, you can interview, but stay off the camera. Yeah. So I didn't think much about it, and I said, well, hell, nobody's watching television in 1951, so I went to work for a newspaper. And then after I'd worked for that newspaper for a few years, I, I kept thinking about it, and my family's in the department store business, and I have these three-way mirrors, and I kept looking in that three-way mirror at myself and that nose of mine and all that kind of stuff, and no chin. And, and I said, you know, that guy's right. So I started down, had it, that's when I started my first cosmetic surgery in 54. You had a, you had a, uh, brought in a, a chin. They did something to your nose. But you're not, I, I understand that you're not, you're not bald, are you? No, I, I shaved my head, but I thought I was going to be bald because my father was bald. But unfortunately, I didn't get bald. But yeah, I but still... see, now, that defeats, I mean, if you're not bald, you know, if it's not raining out, leave the umbrella at home. You know? <laughs> about this. Do you ever, do you know anything about twirling a baton? Is it true that you were a champion baton twirler? God, I didn't think he was going to bring that out. <laughs> well, we have, uh... How long, how long has it been since you've had one of these? Oh, about a month. Really? You, you, you you're an active still, baton I twirler? I still twirl, yes. I, I twirl sometimes between the halves of the, uni of the Rice University games, and, uh, I put on a little deals for charity uh -huh. programs. Well, I, you know, I don't think we can let you out of here alive without a little demonstration of this. I, I think that the audience would probably be cheated uh, if we didn't. Do you mind, Marvin, a little just? Well, I'll try it. All right. I Marvin is Benville, ladies and gentlemen. I witness me. Of course, you know I'm 61 years old. No, I didn't know that. You yes. Didn't. You so, know, uh, you so you don't have look to 61. take that in consideration. All right, sir. In case my arthritis or bursitis 
affects me. Do you need some uh, music? I need a little music for this, yes. A little march music? <laughs> Thank you, Marvin. Mighty impressive.